What is the weirdest thing you found at the bottom of an elevator shaft? I once accidentally lost my driver's license down the little gap in the elevator doors. I just dropped it and was super unlucky as it slipped through. It turned up in my mail ten years later. Obviously long expired, but still crazy that some maintenance guy found it and bothered returning it. Pest control tech here. Snakes had gotten into the pit and were climbing up and dropping down on people as they rode the elevator. Good times. Snakes on an Elevator, the sequel to the Samuel L. Jackson movie. Worked at a hotel, guests dropped their phone down the shaft. After a few failed retrieval efforts, we called the elevator guys. They went down and got the phone and also found a carton of eggs. Rotten, but not cracked. I don't even understand how that could happen, actually. Because it was no accident. I work in tech now, but while I was in college, I helped an HVAC guy, and he had once had me put a carton of fresh eggs in the duct of a client's office that had stiffed him before. When I asked him why he was doing this, he said, if this mother effer doesn't pay up, he's going to have a new issue. But then the guy paid two days later, and I was sent to retrieve the eggs. He called it his 99 cents insurance policy. We found well over 1,500 tax returns at the bottom of the ATO's North Brisbane office elevator shaft. Oh my freaking god, I know who dropped those. Like, exactly who? A person I know told us a story about how they used to work in the ATO Brisbane office, and if anything came across their desk that was too hard, it was dropped into the bottom of the elevator shaft. We were only talking about it the other night, having a giggle about what would happen if they were ever found. They giggled, saying a crap load of files went missing in that shaft. This was way back in the day, like 25 plus years ago, before computers and well before the internet. If something needed to be sent out, they'd have to fill in a form by hand, and then that was typed up by another person on a typewriter, and then sent out in a letter. So it was easy to make paperwork disappear. I feel like 1,500 individual tax returns for a company would account for an awful lot of money. The author who replied to that must feel pretty confident nobody will care enough anymore. My dad was an elevator mechanic for about 15 years. He had a very dark sense of humor and would come home with some of the craziest stories. For example, any time he was in an elevator, he would shake it a little or tap on the displays or buttons and go, Yep, total piece of crap, inferior piece of crap. And I think he mostly just did it to freak people out. One of my favorites, he got a call that someone was hearing weird noises from the elevator. He got inside and rode the elevator up and sure enough, he could hear it too. For half a second, he thought it was a baby crying and realized it was a cat. When he got to a certain floor, he could hear the sad meowing. It obviously wasn't in the elevator car, so he got into the shaft and found this little orange kitty. It had somehow, and I don't think he figured it out or told us, got into the elevator shaft and was sitting in a spot between floors where it wouldn't get crushed by the elevator, but it couldn't get out. My dad saved it and gave it to the building manager to see if it belonged to anyone in the building. It was the one time he ever told us a story that involved him saving an animal instead of finding dead ones. Cats are made of liquid, I'm pretty serious about that. They have a lot of floof and fit through cracks and crevices much smaller than you think should be possible. My dad supervises elevator mechanics, and one of them called him from a mental hospital and said, You've got to see this. The maintenance guy was called because the elevator wasn't quite sitting level on the ground floor. It was about half an inch too high, and both patients and staff had been tripping on it. But all other floors were no problem. My dad arrived to find the maintenance guy cackling and looking into the bottom of the shaft. There were probably tens of thousands of magazines down there. They had to get a bunch of shovels, a small crew, and a rolling dumpster to clear it out. When it was all done, my dad decided to stay behind and pretend to read a newspaper while he sat in the lobby. After about half an hour, he sees an elderly patient holding a magazine, shuffling slowly toward the elevator. He stops in front of the doors, glances left, glances right, and quickly stoops down and slides the magazine into the gap, and shovels away as fast as he can with a huge grin on his face. My dad couldn't help but laugh hysterically. This guy had probably been sliding magazines in there multiple times per day, every day, for decades. I should ask him whether he reported it or let the guy have his fun. It wouldn't surprise me if my dad went with the latter. As a psychiatrist, I've become fairly desensitized to weird patient actions, but I appreciate this story for how long this patient was doing this. Usually the passive-aggressive stuff goes away quickly, but this man sounds resilient as frick. Imagine what he could have done without getting served a bad genetic hand. Our medical team dropped a steel butthole dilator down the dumbwaiter shaft by mistake. When the technician came and grabbed it off the floor, I'll never forget the look on his face when I told him, We need that up here, it's got to go in someone's butt soon. It was priceless. I'm a technician for a hospital dealing with rectal surgical tools, it's very normal. 
That poor dilator, it got away for a minute, thought it was finally leaving that wretched life behind. Next thing it knows, it's lying at the bottom of a filthy dumbwaiter shaft. And just when it's starting to get used to that, thinking, not much of a view, but a lot roomier than I'm used to, along comes the elevator tech and it's back to the old day in, day out. It must have really done something bad in a previous life. I bet it was Roy Cohn. We found a couch. Not joking, it was a walk-in pit that a homeless person had retrofit into a small living room. One of my baseball coaches when I was a kid lost his glass eyeball in an elevator shaft. The maintenance guy gave him a solid what the frick. One time we were doing a rip out at an old factory. They were gutting them and turning them into luxury apartments. The elevator that we were taking out was a crappy old freight that hadn't run in years. When we finally ran it up, we went down to inspect the pit. It smelled like a dead body had chilled there for half a century. The bottom floor wasn't lit, so I shined my flashlight under the elevator, and the whole floor started moving. Roaches. Nasty. Haven't really found anything fun in my time. I've cleaned out more pits than I could count to. I gave my mum a cheap ring I found, found a pair of underwear at a hotel, and I found a full packet of transcribed documents at a courthouse. Oh, and I was on a mod once, and one of the hoistway doors had an advertisement sticker for a tennis restringing service. Which was weird, because it was somewhere only an elevator guy would be able to reach. I called the number, but it was out of service. I found some cool graffiti from the 40s. That's about it. I've worked on escalators for a year and a half. There was a lot more in those pits. I was taking home bent-up quarters every day. There were lots of shoe bits, and I was always nervous of coming across used needles in certain units. I do work at a large hotel. A few years ago, one of our elevators stopped working. Turned out when they opened it up, they found a three-foot pile of guest folios that were never delivered to rooms. Later, when we looked on the camera, we found it was a security guard that got tired of delivering them to the rooms and instead dropped them down the elevator shaft. He did this for months until he was caught. As an elevator technician, this question should be my jam, but unfortunately I've never found anything interesting. A two dollar coin once, a dime bag of some unknown substance, plenty of syringes, or sets of keys. It's mostly just people's junk mail and empty chip bags down there. I had a coworker who was opening a candy bar and dropped it down the shaft by accident. Hopefully the building's rats were able to enjoy it. Uh, I think those rats prefer the term elevator maintenance folk. The elevator guys in my dad's office complex found pieces of a dog's skeleton. Not the whole skeleton, just random parts. I wonder who was dropping poor Fido down the shaft piecemeal and from where. There was logistical effort involved in this very sad incident. I worked in hotel maintenance. A guest reported waterfall sounds in an elevator shaft en route to the lobby. An investigation ensued. A sump pump at the bottom of the shaft was running water constantly. Water is still coming out of the drain it's connected to after I unplug it. Find out from notes from third shift maintenance that multiple first floor rooms had repeated clogged toilets all night long. The plumber called. A six inch sewer drain for the entire building is clogged. Worst clog I've ever seen in 15 years. Washcloths and TP. Over seven inches of clog in the pipe. Apparently it was clogged so badly that it was backing up to the laundry room and the drain for the elevator shaft and the rooms closest to the main pipe out of the building. This was on the first floor suites. There were solid turds at the bottom of that shaft after that event. I quit about a week later for unrelated circumstances. In conclusion, turds. I found keys and trash, bugs if the building is exceptionally crappy, mostly just dirt and rust. I found a paint roller that the last guy left there once. It was stuck to the floor. Not a whole lot of weird stuff can make it between the sill and the landing. Surprisingly, nothing too extreme. I'm an electrician, so we will find ourselves in a pit from time to time. Some ID badges, credit cards, coins. Once I found a red pen. It was out of ink, though. I worked security in a large department store. We routinely had to pop it open to retrieve dropped keys, wallets, and phones. Recovered a $2,500 gold necklace covered in poop. A would-be shoplifter darted out of our jewelry department and suitcased the necklace while in the elevator. When he realized we were waiting for him at the exit level, he went back up a floor, removed it, and dropped it down the shaft. We arrested him anyway, much to his surprise. Work for a major transit hub. We have our own trade departments. I'm in elevating. Weirdest things I've found are as follows. A Chucky doll head, 13 rubber duckies in one pit, syringes almost daily, and a silicon gimp mask. Every day is an adventure. At a place where my wife used to work, a body. 
There was a crash from the elevator area. The boss went to see what it was and came back white as a sheet and said, Do not go in there. Two maintenance guys had been working on the elevator, and one of them was in the bottom of the shaft and the other one made a small error. But I'm guessing the single most unusual item ever found at the bottom of an elevator shaft was a Wright R2600 aircraft engine on July 28, 1945, in the Empire State Building. You can submit your own stories to be featured here on the channel. The story submission link is in the description below. And if you want to listen to some vibey music in the background, check out Easy Mode, also linked below, and subscribe. I used to work at an old 22-story building that had the first automated elevator system in our state. The idea was, in order to control the flow of people in the lobby, you would push the button for your floor and the elevator would tell you which one to get in. The elevators would make sure the crowds spread out over the big lobby. Anyway, it was the first time I'd ever seen the auto-open eyes used, too. I worked on the executive floor where the long-winded executives would often stop me as I was leaving. I got used to passing my hand through the doors to break the eye and hold the doors open. You guessed it, my left hand didn't trip the eye. The doors closed on my hand, which were prevented from closing completely because of my heavy engagement and wedding rings. Crushed the whole mess and lost a two-carat diamond 22 stories below. My hand was only bruised, thank goodness for a safety shutoff. I like to think that someday someone will find a tiny treasure. I'm not a technician, but I can tell you some dude at some point is going to find a Kindle at the bottom of a shaft in a Toronto hotel elevator. Rules to remember. Rule 1. Always check that you zipped your carry-on and didn't leave a gap in the bottom. Rule 2. Kindles fit through small carry-on bag zipper gaps and elevator shaft gaps. Not an elevator repair person, but you'd be shocked by the number of nurses that drop their keys down the shaft. 20 stories up and two buildings away from the parking garage, and they already had their keys in their hand. I had to call maintenance all the time for retrieval. I once dropped my keys stepping into an elevator and they landed on the gap, with one key bridging the gap and all the others hanging down. Let me tell you, I reached down and grabbed them most gingerly. I used to keep my work security pass in the card holder in my wallet. Once my friend bumped me as we were getting out of the lift and the same thing happened. It landed straight across the gap. All those years of playing operation finally get to pay off sooner or later. I work as a phlebotomist in a hospital and had just drawn an elderly male patient. As I pushed my little cart into the elevator to go back down to the lab, his blood vials rolled off and both went right down the gap into the shaft. I felt so bad and immediately went back to tell him I had to redraw him. He was thrilled, said he was excited his blood would be down in the shaft for eternity. Such a funny guy. Retired after 40 years in the elevator maintenance trade, the best I ever found was a $20 bill. But I know a man that found a $7,000 diamond ring he kept for six months and no one ever asked about it. He gave it to his wife. Empty substance bags or used rubbers and needles, money or discarded lotto tickets. Usually the norm. If you're lucky, maybe an infestation of roaches sometimes. I'm reading a lot, and I mean a lot of people in the other comments who found purple adult toys. It's all in the same shaft, so to speak. Not elevator maintenance, but one time I dropped a set of wheels for a cart in the crack. I'm sure some maintenance man is going to be concerned to find loose wheels in the elevator of a nursing home, like some elderly person is walking around with a wheelless walker. I found a doll sitting upright in a corner, and a little bag of smack. I'm willing to bet a reasonable amount that if you took the substances, then you'd wake up in the middle of the night with that doll haunting your household. Not exactly an answer to the question, but still adjacent. When we came to a call about broken doors, we were not expecting that someone, for some unknown reasons, stole one half of an elevator's doors. I found a whole salmon and a king crab in the same kitchen elevator of a seafood restaurant. A hundred dollar and twenty dollar bills and tons of syringes and rubbers. In 1988, the same bones were rediscovered when a new elevator shaft near the south parking lot on Elm Street was excavated. At that time, 11 skulls and 88 pounds of bones were found on one day, followed by 119 more pounds of bones. The Inquirer reported that they were being stored at the morgue. Cincinnati Music Hall, built on a children's home, built on a potter's field, built on a burial site, built on bulldozed indigenous mounds. I mean, that place is definitely not haunted, right?
Holy crap, I've just asked a guy I knew who does this work last night. It wasn't surprising as I expected. Just a ball. A very large ball. That had no business being able to get down there. Then I asked if he ever left anything strange down there for the next guy. He went quiet and slowly turned to me, pulling a barbie out of his pocket. I found the Chamber of Secrets. You're a maintenance technician, Harry. Not an elevator repair. A few months ago, we had a floridly psychopathic patient. Think staring into space, can't form a coherent sentence, and a few other symptoms. He was brought into hospital. There was a fire alarm at an apartment building, and when the fire team went in, they somehow found this guy living in an elevator shaft. He had evidently been there for some period of time. Most of his delusions that he was talking about for me, that I could understand, were about time travel and Jesus. So we were joking a bit that he wasn't actually psychotic and was just time traveling Jesus. It depends on the building and neighborhood. I've seen everything from dirty diapers to used needles, keys, wallets, phones, picture frames, sandwiches, and I guess the icing on the cake was a Tamagotchi. No, it didn't work, so we typically just trashed everything unless it was valuable. I always turned jewelry into the management's office, but I worked with guys who definitely sold valuables for unsavory purposes. In conclusion, that crack between the car and the door is a black hole for objects. The company where I worked had an old heavy-duty freight elevator that was semi-abandoned. It was more like an automotive lift with giant pistons embedded in the ground, but installed in an elevator shaft. When they needed to move something huge, they would fill the hydraulics with oil. It took hundreds of gallons of oil to top off the system, including the giant pistons, and then they would use it for a day. A few months later, they would try to use it again and find the oil gone. Once, they planned to use it the following day, so maintenance pumped in the oil to get ready. The next day, no oil. They refilled it the morning of the move and got one lift out of it before it stopped. The company knew it was spilling hydraulic oil into the ground under the plant and just didn't give a crap. They finally abandoned it for good when the maintenance guys threatened to report the illegal oil dumping. I had to clean some bad insulation at the top of the elevator chamber. So the maintenance guy brought the elevator to the top of the second floor and we got on top to reach up. On the elevator car were a few pairs of women's underwear and used rubbers. So someone was doing the deed on top of the elevator. How they got there was a mystery because it was a very modern one and you need a special key to open the control box to access the top of the elevator. 100% this special key is the exact same key across thousands of elevators. Some jerk with a 3D printer, plaster, lead and a high resolution camera i.e. a modern smartphone, can pretty accurately reproduce working keys from a photograph. Or you just buy the five most common keys on eBay for 15 bucks. In college, I pulled out my lanyard on which my Motorola Razor was sitting. My phone flew up in the air and dropped in the gap between the elevator and the floor. It dropped four floors. Maintenance was able to climb down there and my phone barely had a scratch. My dad has been an elevator repairman for almost 30 years now. His best find to date was a $12,000 yellow diamond engagement ring. Tried for a while to find the owner, but eventually he got to keep it. Been in the game for 12 years now, found a full Christmas tree last month. Other finds are 5k and $20 notes, a big bag of substances, roughly 5 kilograms of brand new shoes by the box load, and a severed finger. So backstory, the Christmas tree was found this year on a council estate in August. Photos were taken for the office as it was rather amusing. I visit this lift every month. The money and substances were found in the same lift around three months apart seven years ago. The money was split between me and my engineer as I was an apprentice at the time. The substances we handed into security. The shoes were found on a passenger staff lift out the back of JD Sports. We suspect a staff member was sticking them down there and loading them into a car at the end of his shift. Police were involved in this one. The finger was found in a very expensive apartment building. We're talking 50 floors and million dollar apartments. Again, police and emergency medical services were involved in this one. Elevator repairman here. I haven't found anything crazy, just the normal stuff. Cockroaches, underwear, and a couple of bucks. But since you're reading this, I'll let you in on the little known feature. Elevators have a tipping feature. If you slip money down between the sill into the pit, the elevator will get you to your floor faster. If you put in enough money, it will skip all other calls and bring you right to your floor. You're welcome. No, don't mind me down here. I found ID cards, keys, small dead animals, lizards and rats mostly, lots of cobwebs, needles, one AirPod, and things like that. The weirdest thing I've ever found as a repair guy is a clean pit. The service guys normally don't clean anything. I remember when I was maybe 10, I had a Nokia 3310, I believe. One of the brick ones, anyway. 
I dropped it down the bottom of the elevator shaft in the small gap between the doors on the 6th or 7th floor. It was down there for months until I saw the elevator and maintenance man and asked if he could have a look. Not only was it still down there, unbroken, it still had battery life. Those were the days. I'm not an elevator maintenance person, but I have been in dozens of elevator shafts for work. I'm a bomb tech and when I was in the army I did a lot of POTUS and VIP missions in conjunction with the Secret Service. They don't have a bomb squad so they steal us. It's a great gig and you get to travel all over and stay in some insanely nice hotels. Anyway, the elevator shafts must be cleared to ensure there aren't any devices in there. Basically, any place that the POTUS or VIP will go needs to be checked out. I've done a fair amount of elevator surfing, which is riding on top of the car. The weirdest and funniest thing I've ever seen was a 12-inch Superman figurine that had its feet glued to the top of the elevator. The head was slightly tilted back and the arms were pointing upwards, so it appeared like Superman was flying up, up, and away whenever the elevator was in use. I have a picture of it saved on an external hard drive somewhere. That crap was hilarious. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. Put the playlist on in the background to finish listening to all the stories, or if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Genius, give Am I the Jerk a shot. Everything linked in the description.